May already. So welcome to a few thoughts um, about today's reading. Today I'm going to concentrate on some of the X reading or the reading from the X of the Apostles. So I'm going to read six verses and then wonder about it. So it's X 9 and I'm only going to read 1 to 6. In church, gathering in the building, you know, when we're all together, I'm going to read through to 20. But here now, I'm just going to read to 6. Saul kept on threatening to kill the Lord's followers. He even went to the high priest and asked for letters to the leaders of the synagogues in Damascus. He did this because he wanted to arrest and take to Jerusalem any man or woman who had accepted the Lord's way. When Saul had almost reached Damascus, a bright light from heaven suddenly flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you so cruel to me? Who are you? Saul asked. I am Jesus, the Lord answered. I am the one you are so cruel to. Now get up and go into the city where you will be told what to do. And then, as you can imagine, the story goes on because he got up, went to the city and was told what to do and a whole lot of things changed. So setting the scene for this, this is a writing um, in the New Testament. So in the chronological order, um, Jesus has been killed, has, has risen again and is now manifesting um, to, to people. But this is quite a long time later. Saul is a very Jewish man, okay, really Jewish, a leader, um, and then his name is changed through this experience later and becomes Paul, the apostle, who then writes huge amounts of stuff that's in um, the New Testament. Some of Paul's letters to these new churches, these little churches, um, are some of the earliest writings that we have. They predate the Gospels, the story of Jesus being written down. So massively significant. This is Saul, the murderer of Christians, becoming Paul, the apostle, writing significant things that the church has been built on since. So huge. Now, I have no doubt that um, for Jewish leaders, murdering Christians was not um, the plan, like not ideal. So let's not, um, let's not think that this is a kind of normal Jewish behavior in the time. Let's, let's just not go down um, some rabbit holes that might be unhelpful. However, let's, let's think about Saul and then ourselves. So Saul, Saul thought he was right. Like Saul was so passionately convinced that he was doing the right thing for his God, for his idea and experience and version of his understanding of God. He was convinced he was doing good. Turns out he wasn't. I mean, and actually, even you take all the religious stuff out of it, and we would go, hey, that can't be good, like, anyway. But, you know, let's park that. But it turns out that Jesus came to him in a experience, in a vision, in a um, manifestation, and interestingly, there's a couple of things about that. 
So Saul is murdering and persecuting those that are following Jesus. Okay? And Jesus says, Why are you so cruel to me? I am the one you are so cruel to. When we are persecuting, awful, hurting those people that are following Jesus, we are hurting Jesus. Now, I go one step further when we damage and hurt humans or the future humans or the planet. Um, that's, actually, that's actually, you know, like an assault on our relationship with God. Jesus doesn't say, why are you hurting those people who like me? Why are you hurting those people who follow me? No, no, why are you hurting me? When we hurt the body, we hurt the body. <laughs> not to say we should put up with nonsense and not speak out against it when things are happening. Because the second point is, Saul becomes Paul, but while he was Saul, he thought he was right. Thought he was doing the right thing by his idea of God. And he was wrong. And he had to make a big change. He had to repent, turn around, go and do something different now. And we're no different. There might be times in our lives where we are so convinced we're right and then we have some kind of epiphany and we need to make some changes. I contend that these epiphany things may happen out of the blue like this but also happen because we intentionally reflect on our lives, on our decisions. So at the end of the day, at the end of the week, somewhere in our daily practices, we have some time to reflect and be willing to make the changes. And then ways of helping us and each other make those changes, because change is hard. There are a lot of ways we can do that. There are a lot of tools and people and practices that can help. Different people might gel with different ones. But everyone benefits from some kind of reflective practice. And then changing to do better. Not just those that are, you know, at the soul end of things and really, really doing big things that need to change. But all of us can benefit from an epiphany because we reflect upon some things in our lives and we make some changes. Send me a message. Be in touch if you would like to know some more about some of the things that you can do. Some of the various practices and ways out there. They are all through all sorts of faith traditions and not faith traditions. There's loads of great things um, in the artist's way about unconscious writing in the morning, the morning pages, through to, um, you know, gratitude practices, through to some more of the religious or spiritual disciplines. We're all wired differently and we will all benefit from something. It just might look different to different people.